Ain't nobody got time for that. So is Tyler Perry playing in our faces? How could a leading black Hollywood employer make such terrible films? <clears throat> First of all, every time I used to watch his plays, I was in uh, Houston at that time. I was in college. I found them very funny because usually somebody was sharing their uh, green with me. But at the same time, almost every single one of them had a huge plot hole. He never really, he starts storylines in the same story and he finishes the main story, but then you're left like, what happened to that couple? What the fuck happened over there? And I hate that, but when it comes to his movies, I really have not been watching them. I'm serious. I've heard they're all alike. You will not. I will manifest it. Thank you, girl. I'm still manifesting a house for my family as it is. Uh, so I'm not sure if an actual basement exists when it comes to the quality of Tyler Perry content, but divorce in the black has to be close. I heard it was good. I don't want to watch it because I just don't like dramas. Perry's first ever 0% Rotten Tomato score and what might be the most ridiculous opening eight minutes of a film involving a Monique clone and a former Beyonce in law you've ever seen. Black will likely cause you to turn the shit off before it even gets going as I did. They said it. I didn't. That's what they wrote. I never watched it. So I don't know. But this person is not happy about it. And apparently they're trying to say the actor is the best actor of in the world right now. Sir, no, you are not. Yet this being the 50th something this Perry film and the second this year, we the second, what was the first? Shit, I forgot. We all knew what we were getting into with Black. I, I didn't watch it. I don't know what y'all got into. His films are a watch to see how bad they are exercised and tolerance in which many of us only engage so we can talk trash on social media. I just wish he would stop with the fucking plot holes. And so goes the Tyler Perry conflict that has just stated since Medea pulled her first Glock. One hand, perhaps no director or producer in Hollywood has enjoyed so many black actors, even if his contribution to the his studio town of Atlanta are questionable. Is anybody living out there? I just want to know. Award-winning A-list actors like Viola Davis and Idris Elba will admit in hushed tones that Perry cut them the check they needed early in their careers. Good luck getting either to do a Perry movie in 2024. Perry, what the hell movie was Viola in? Shit, I don't know. Perry has also gotten love from black stars, Megan Good, Corey Hardick. Har Corey Hardick, they're saying Corey Hardick is the best actor of all times right now. What the fuck? He's the best actor in the world right now. That's what they're saying. You have lost your damn mind. Your rabbit ass mind. Anyways, who said they made more money with him than anyone else in the industry that's thrilled to underpay black people? There's no denying Perry's import to in this manner, nor is there denying the brilliance of skating to success via previously untapped black Christian women demographic. Oh, that's fucked up. On the other hand, his films are now ultra predictable smorgasbord of black stereotypes and tropes, many of which were already offensive when he started perpetrating them 20 plus years ago. Take a uh, take a down on her luck sister who's made every bad decision a human can make. Pair her with a comically toxic man. Hi, Steve Harris. Mix in a faintly black man to swoop in with his cape to save her. Sprinkle in a little church and voila, facsimile and nauseam. And hope your audience doesn't notice. And oh, fuck a writer's room. Who needs one of those when he can write every movie by himself and stack dough? Perry has spent years rebuffing these complaints, recently dubbing those of us who insist on a mo mondicum, mondicum, I don't know that word, of a mo mondicum, mondicum of cinematic quality, highbrow Negroes, as he did on Kiki Palmer's podcast, Baby, This Is Kiki Palmer. I have never watched any of these podcasts. Everybody got a podcast. Now Perry didn't make it billionaire status by being a rank idiot. He's worked in enough material by auteurs to know that staying siloed into his own brand of divisive uh, filmmaking will invite critics at his doorstep with pitchforks. His staunch refusal to get a writer's room is likely. Hey, Moo Moo, let me go ahead and shoot you, uh, shoot you a shout out. While I'm sitting up here talking about God dang Tyler, uh, Tyler Perry and his horrible, horrible movies. 
Y'all go check out uh, Mumu and Mimosa. She be doing some interesting stuff too, real life events and uh, tea. Uh, I enjoy the real life events personally, but um, every now and then I dabble in the uh, tea and I can get it from her. So check out her page. Uh, let me put that up there one more time, just so y'all know there it is. Let me get back into this with uh, Tyler. I personally have not watched his movies in a very long time because I just don't want to anymore. I think after uh, Boo 2, I was done. However, regardless of if he wants the gig, Perry wants matters to Black Hollywood. He's Mr. Perry to a number of entertainers we enjoy, but something has to give at some point. He can't keep making films with some epigon of evil, light-eyed Michael Ely terrorizing a beautiful real estate executive who wouldn't even be in this shit if she only turned her life to the Lord and expect us to continue watching them. He does have a trend. Essentially, Tyler Perry needs to stop playing in our faces. The near universal condemnation of the divorce in the black proves there's a clock to his bullshit and it's ticking. I don't know. Honestly, I've just been trying to dodge the Tubi movies because I can't believe some of the titles of the Tubi movies. But real talk, I never watched it. I don't watch a lot of the movies that go straight to like Netflix and shit from him. Uh, they don't make sense to me. And quite frankly, with his plays, some of them are really good. But they leave potholes that piss me off. And I hate movies that don't fucking end. Okay? I need fucking closure. But anyways, now we're getting more into the health. I don't know if this is health or um, celebrity. I'm just going to go with health. Here we go. All right. Reality TV star Charity Lawson's mental health went through hell and back while on Dancing with Stars. Well, hell yeah. She's a pretty woman. Skinny. Former bachelorette, oh, that's why she's famous, okay. Former, uh, former woman that looking for a husband, Charity Lawson can attest to the different treatment black women often experience in the reality TV world versus their white counterparts. Uh, duh. Lawson, 29, who first made her name for herself when she became a fan favorite on season 27 of The Bachelor, and again when she started her own season of The Bachelorette, is history-making seasoned veteran. She wrapped her season engaged to Dotun, I'm not saying that last name, the franchise's first ever Black couple. That's a hot mess right there. Why the hell are we still dealing with first? Given her experience with Bachelor Nation as the franchise's massive and highly active fan base is called, Lawson thought she was more than ready to take on Dancing with the Stars. Is she married? She's been on two Bachelor uh, shows. Is she married is my question. However, she did say the experience was much worse. Oh, shit. As a guest on the podcast Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans, why are you on that? Lawson said she was speaking out for the first time about how online trolls bullied her to the point of needing an onset therapist. She should already have one. Every goddamn person should have a damn onset therapist in almost every freaking line of work. I believe Mavis and uh, Hattie have fucked up my uh, coasters again. I heard them hit the ground just a second ago. If you heard something, that's what that was bastards anyways while dancing with the stars was great i literally went through hell and back with my mental health on that show she told host and former uh dwts oh dancing with the stars star uh cheryl burke she explained i was getting death threats for existing for not performing enough for being conceited for being entitled it was so damaging night in night out okay i'm just gonna cut right here and just say uh first of all uh that's not your fault, but you did have to understand that there are trolls everywhere. And I don't understand why there are people in this world that just like to fuck with people just for the hell of it. I don't know the joy you get out of that. But um, there are those people that exist that love chaos. They are agents of chaos. They are demons in disguise, if you ask me. And you just have to understand that now that everybody has access to everybody, it seems, um, they're going to tell you how they feel. You can ignore it. That's the best thing you should do, honestly, and just go ahead and get yourself some, uh, what you call it, some, um, some, uh, what is it? Uh, some security. But anyways, let me move to the next story. I think uh, if, 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 if uh, Mumu's in here, she, well, sister girl, she's in here. She can uh, attest for this one. Emotional content. So maternity care in rural areas is in crisis. Can more doulas help? This was reported uh, two nights ago. Yeah, two nights ago. Oh, Lord, she happy about something. When 
uh, Bristeria Clark went into labor with her son in 2015. Her contractions were steady at first. Then they stalled. Her cervix stopped dilating. After a few hours, doctors at Phoebe Putney Memorial Hospital in Albany, Chicago, not Chicago, I'm sorry, Albany, Georgia, Chicago's on my head, uh, prepped Clark for an emergency cesarean, uh, hurt people hurt people. Yeah, they do. Cesarean section. I'm hurt. I don't want to hurt nobody. I just want people to leave me alone. It wasn't the vaginal birth Clark had hoped for during her pregnancy. I was freaking out. That was my first child. Like, of course you don't plan that, she said. I just remembered the gas pulling up to my face, and I ended up going to sleep. That's how I felt when my mother made me travel through space and time. She remembered feeling a rush of relief when she woke to see her baby boy was healthy. Clark, a 33-year-old nursing student who also works full-time in county government, had another C-section when her second child was born in 2020. This time, the cesarean was planned. Clark said she was grateful the, the physicians and nurses who delivered both her babies were kind and caring during her labor and delivery. But looking back, she said she wishes she had a doula for one-on-one -on -one support through pregnancy, childbirth, and the postpartum period. Now she wants to give other women the option she didn't have. Clark is a member of Morehouse School of Medicine's first class of rural doulas called Prenatal Patient Navigators. The program recently graduated a dozen participants, all Black women, from southern, southwestern Georgia. They have completed more than five months of training and are scheduled to begin working with pregnant and postpartum patients this year. Well, that's very enlightening. We're developing a workforce that's going to be providing the support that black women and birthing people, fuck it, women, Natalie Hernandez Green as Associate Professor of Obstetrics, I'm not going to say that again, and Gynecology at Morehouse School of Medicine said at the doula commencement ceremony in Albany, Georgia. Albany is Morehouse School of Medicine's second prenatal patient navigator program site. The first had been up and running in Atlanta since training began in the fall of 2022. Georgia has one of the highest rates of maternal mortality in the country, according to an analysis by KFF, a health information nonprofit that includes KFF Health News and Black Georgians are more likely, uh, more than twice as likely as white Georgians to unalive of causes related to pregnancy. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, Black women are unaliving at an alarming rate from pregnancy-related complications, said Hernandez Green, who is also executive director of the Center for Maternal Health Equity at Morehouse School of Medicine. And we're about to change that one person at a time. I'm getting a doula. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm definitely going to get a doula. The presence of a doula, along with the regular nursing care, is associated with improved labor and delivery outcomes, reduced stress, and higher rates of patient satisfaction. According to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, multiple studies also link doulas to fewer expensive childbirth interventions, including cesarean birth. Doulas are not medical professionals. They are trained to offer education about the pregnancy and postpartum periods, to guide patients through the health care system, and to provide emotional and physical support before, during, and after childbirth. Morehouse School of Medicine's program is among a growing number of similar efforts being introduced across the country as more communities look to doulas to help address maternal mortality, a poor maternal health outcomes, particularly for Black women and other women of color. Now that she has graduated, Clark said she's looking forward to helping other women in her community as a doula. To be that person, that would be her there. Um, that would be for my clients treat ah, to be that person that would be there for my clients treat them like a sister or like a mother in the sense of treating them with the utmost respect she said the ultimate goal is to make them feel comfortable and let them know i'm here to support you her training has inspired her to become an advocate for maternal health issues in southwestern georgia Grants fund Morehouse School of Medicine doula program, which costs $350,000 a year to operate. Graduates are given a $2,000 training stipend, and the program places five graduates with health care providers in southwestern Georgia. Grant money also pays the doula's salaries for one year. It is not sustainable if you're chasing the next grant to fund it, said Rachel Hardiman, a professor of health and racial equality. 
where did he, uh, in the University of Minnesota School of Public Health. 13 states cover doulas through Medicaid, according to the Georgia University Center for Children and Families. Hardiman and others have found that when Medicaid programs cover doula care, states save millions of dollars in health care costs. We are able to calculate the return on investment if Medicaid decides to reimburse doulas for pregnant people who for pregnant women who are Medicaid beneficiaries, she said. That's uh, because doulas can help reduce the number of expensive medical interventions during and after birth and improve delivery outcomes, including reduced cesarean sessions. Doulas can even reduce the likelihood of preterm birth. Who the hell is that? Anyways, an infant that is born at a very, very early gestational age is going to to uh, require a great deal of resources and interventions to ensure that they survive and then to continue to thrive, Hardiman said. Yeah, they should. There is a growing number, uh, they're growing, there's a growing demand for doula services in Georgia, said Fawazio, for, yeah, JAMA, director of the Research for Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies Coalition of Georgia. Her group recently completed a pilot study that offered doula services to about 170 uh, Georgians covered under Medicaid. We had a wait list of over 200 clients and we wanted to give them the support they needed, but we just couldn't with the given resources that we had, JAMA said. Doula services can cost hundreds or thousands of dollars out of pocket, making it too expensive for many low income people, rural communities and communities of color, many of which suffer from shortages in maternity care, according to the March of Dimes. The Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies study found that matching high risk patients with doulas, particularly doulas from similar racial and ethnic backgrounds, had a positive effect on patients. There was a reduced use of pitocin in induced um, labor. We saw fewer requests for pain medication, and with our infants, only 6% were low birth rate, JAMA said. Uh, still, she and others acknowledge that doulas cannot fix the problem of high mar uh, maternal mortality or morbidity. States, including Georgia, need to do more to bring comprehensive maternity care to communities that need more options, Hardiman said. I think it is important to understand that doulas are not going to save us. We should not put that expectation on them. Doulas are a tool, she said. They are a piece of the puzzle that is helping to impact a really, really complex issue. Exactly. Hashtag support doulas. I'm getting a doula. That's all I know. I know what the doula I want. So that's all I got to say. I got to travel to get to my doula too, but I want a doula. So that's all I got to say about that. They are supporting this. They're trying to get new programs and that's what we need. I'm probably going to definitely need a doula. I don't want to get caught out there because them people I don't trust. Um. Oh, you must have been away from your computer when she popped in. Okay, so that's it for the health. And now a palate cleanser because weird stuff kind of makes you forget the bad stuff. And this is really freaking weird here. Man pulls three planes while walking on his hands. Y'all got no time. You, you got too much time on your hands. You, you ain't got shit to do, do you? This was reported yesterday. Look at this shit. I don't know if y'all gonna be able to hear it, but look at this. My internet is not so good. But yeah, he walked on his hands. This is the guy. He walked on his hands. We're not gonna watch him do that shit. He walked on his goddamn hands, pulling three planes. Where are they coming up with these ideas, please? So on July 30th, an Italian man pulled three small planes while walking on his hands to break up Guinness World Record. Who the hell thought this shit up? Y'all got too much time on your hands. Matteo Pavone broke the record for the most light aircraft pulled by walking on hands with successful attempt in Castle to Nuova, Don Bosco, Asti, Italy. Can't you just say Italy? Pavone said he turned he turned to more unusual athletic pursuits after a series of injuries forced him to quit rugby. Well, that's your ass deciding on rugby. Shit. The worst of them was a back bad back injury he told the guinness world record the doctor said i could never play sports again but they were wrong his training for the record attempted attempt included yoga cardio strength training pavone said he plans to surpass his own record you bastards are nuts good grief 
Um, I'm proud of this record, he said, but I also, I'm also not entirely satisfied about the final results. I'm sure I can pull four aircrafts or even more, so I'll try to do that as soon as I can. Sir, get a job. That's all I'm going to tell you. Go get a goddamn job. Now, before we move on, I have a little time, so uh, chop it up Wednesday. Haven't had that in a while. I'm going to put the link down. If y'all want to come up, you know how I do. Two minutes and I get my ass out of here if y'all don't come up. So give me a second here, um, and then I got to do something because I'm something trying to bite me in the dark, damn it. I don't like the dark. I don't like uh, being in the light all the time, so usually I'm in the dark with my light hitting me. So, yeah, like I said, y'all can come up here for a few minutes if you want. If not, you know how I do two minutes and I'm out. Give me a second. I got my damn killer right here. You know how I do, though. So that's the link. If you want to come up for a few minutes, please do. If not, you know, I got an extra 15 minutes. And if y'all just want to let me go on home, I mean, go on and eat or whatever the fuck, that's fine, too. Uh, either way, I win. Because if y'all talk to me, then I get to talk to y'all. If y'all don't, I get to eat dinner. Either way, I'm getting something out of it. So, um... But real talk, I, I really, I, I am going to plug, like I said, I just did the recording. Now I just need to do the graphics for my I Got Smoke part two of why I would stop by the horror movie. And um, I already got it recorded. I did it today. Um, I'll hopefully be pushing it out tomorrow um, once I get home from work. Braiding hair. Oh, you braiding hair? Yeah, I braided my hair. I wish I could corn roll. I can't corn roll because if I could corn roll, I'd stop doing box braids and just do some crochet braids. That shit is much, much easier. All right, y'all. One more minute and then I'm out of here, y'all. But uh, like I said, uh, don't forget, Terry, you said you're going to come visit me this weekend. So please do. Hattie and them are waiting for you, too. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. I love my kittens. I like to complain. So y'all just... Uh, I've always liked to complain. I think it's hereditary in my family because I promise you my mother, when she gets a hold of me, she complains. And I think she just lets all the complaint out on me. So uh, I'm cool with it, though, because then I listen to her and then I complain back at her and we just have a complaint fest. We get it out. And we go on about our businesses. So, yeah, um, I will be doing some more. I got smokes and I got smoke is basically me complaining about shit and doing deep dives. So uh, check into that. And that's my time. Y'all two minutes. Uh, thank you so much for coming about to go ahead and put my outro in. And as always, without y'all, I would be nothing. So thank you so much. And I hope to see y'all again on Sunday at 630 Eastern, um, you know, 530 Central. Good night, y'all. I can't believe Oh, I always got the phone In the house and they all with my dog All the way I can't believe Oh, I always got the phone In the house and they all with my dog All the way